There is a huge wave now in the world, as you know, about the so-called law of attraction. This wave has been created by the movie The Secret uh, and by uh, other authors who are writing books on this subject. And many uh, New Age and New Thought and New Spirituality teachers who have been writing on this subject for a very long time. But here's something that I've noticed, and I've looked very, very carefully to make sure that I wasn't making this up or creating a problem where there was none or manufacturing something that wasn't true. As I've looked deeply at all that's been written, or most of it, and all that's been said in the movie on the secret and the law of attraction, I noticed that there is an unspoken truth that simply isn't being shared with people. Uh, and that is especially true uh, in the movie The Secret, in which, by the way, I appear, so I'm not slapping the movie. I just noticed that it was incomplete. And there are several ways in which the movie is incomplete, so it's kind of like a primer uh, about the law of attraction, which is why so many people have been trying to use the law since they've seen the movie and found that it doesn't work quite as well as they might have thought or hoped. So the law of attraction is, I think, not completely explained in other sources. And that's why, in my opinion, it is not as effective for some people as those people would like. I call the law of attraction, or the energy of attraction, if you will, um, personal creation. It's the power of personal creation is what we're talking about here. So let's, let's begin by understanding that the law of attraction is simply a group of words, a phrase that has been now popularly used to refer to a principle, a divine and spiritual principle of life. And I have used the words the power of personal creation to describe that principle. The power of personal creation is about the power of life to produce more life. It is about power, plain and simple, the power to change your life. Attraction is a gift from a benevolent and compassionate deity. And here is the unspoken truth about the law of attraction. It is a tool with two handles, one in your hands and one in God's. And, you know, if you take out the movie The Secret, and I'm sure most of you have it in your homes, and play it again, and put a stopwatch to it, I think you'll discover that the word God is not mentioned for the first 100 and maybe 15 minutes. Uh, I don't think that the word God is mentioned until about two and a half or three minutes before the end of the movie. And frankly, that was quite deliberate on the part of the producers. Because the intention here was to make it clear that the law of attraction is a power that you have and that you are the one who is empowered to use it. And I think that the producers of the film did not want to step in their own way or get in their own way by bringing too much of God into it. And so, in fact, they brought in, in my view, too little. And they wound up with a movie that only speaks of God, I think, two or three times. I think the word is mentioned perhaps three times or so in the last three and a half minutes of the film. And not much is made about the God connection. So I would like to talk about the unspoken truth about the law of attraction, which is the God connection, and also, even more powerfully perhaps, how the law of attraction fits into the overall cosmology or if you, of life, or if you please, the mechanism of manifestation itself, which is something else that's not discussed at all in uh, the movie The Secret or in the other books written on this subject. We all know that the ability to create your own reality is an expression of divinity. That is why it always works. In fact, it is impossible for it not to work. It is a fundamental principle of the universe. It's the nature of things. And the law of attraction works most effectively when it is used for the purpose for which it was intended. And here is another unspoken truth about the law of attraction. Most people do not use the law of attraction 
for the purpose for which it was intended. So let me repeat what I said a minute ago. I said that attraction is a tool that works most effectively when it is used for the purpose for which it was intended. That is, it most often produces the results that are desired when it is used as it was designed to be used. But it is always producing some results because it is always being used, whether those using that know it or not. This is the great gift of God. Continuous power, continuously on. Let me repeat that, please. The great gift of God is continuous power, continuously on. That is, there's no off switch here. And the power we're talking about is the power of personal creation. We are talking here about a systematic process of cause and effect that never shuts down. God is that process. God is that system. This is what God means when God says to us, I am with you always, even unto the end of time. That is something that is not generally understood and that is rarely explained about attraction or about God. And it needs to be explained, I think, to everyone at the outset when we're discussing this topic. So what I'm saying is that we need now to contextualize this business of attraction. The energy of attraction is part of a larger system of cause and effect in the universe. I'm going to repeat that because that's the most important thing I'm going to say to you tonight. The energy of attraction is part of a larger system of cause and effect in the universe. Talking about attraction as if it were a law unto itself is a little like, well, it's a little like talking about gravity without discussing the physics that explain what gravity does and why. So let us look then more deeply at the great principles of life. Life expresses itself through five principles. The first is the energy of attraction, which gives you power. The second is the law of opposites, which gives you opportunity. The third is the gift of wisdom, which gives you discernment. The fourth is the joy of wonder, which gives you imagination. And the fifth great principle of life is the presence of cycles, which gives you eternity. This larger five-step or five-part system regulates the process of personal creation. You might even call this system, and this process for that matter, God. Now that's a very new thought to many people. I invite you to explore this idea just for now. Could God really be, after all is said and done, a process? And could that process be the experience called life? Is the process of personal creation simply the playing out of life as it naturally expresses? See, life I have come to understand is God. It is God being God and becoming what God is next going to be. That's a complex and extraordinary system that includes a process that produces an expression called life. And so what we have here is a circle. The eternal cycle of process, expression, experience is divinity itself. It is God, Godding. This is the manifestation of the presence of cycles. And all things respond to this presence. All things exist in cycles. And so what I want you to know as a, part, as a product of this class here, is that attraction is part of a larger system. Attraction is one of the great principles of life. It is not the only great principle of life, nor is it the most important of the great principles of life, but yet there are five great principles of life. When you understand about the five principles of life and how they all work, suddenly the law of attraction will start to work for you much more effectively and much more consistently, and much more efficiently. So let's look at this five-part system. We already know what the first of the five parts is, and we know how that works. We know about the energy of attraction, which gives you power. And, and there's no uh, reason for us to describe how that works, or how to make it work, because uh, all of us have seen the movie, all of us have read the books, and, and all of us understand how that works. As you think, so will it be done. 
the uh, power of personal creation involves uh, expression, verbal thought, word, and deed, what you think, what you say, what you do. So we, we pretty much understand how the law of attraction is supposed to work. But what no one told us about is the other four principles of life, the law of opposites, for instance, which is most important for us to understand. The law of opposites creates a contextual field within which the power of personal creation or the law of attraction may work. And that's because of an extraordinary truth about life. In the absence of that which you are not, that which you are is not. I'll say that again. In the absence of that which you are not, that which you are is not. It's very important to grasp this if you are to know how the law of attraction works. So let me explain the principle very clearly. In the absence of cold, hot is not. Hot can be experienced as an idea, as a thought, but not as a physical reality, unless cold exists. Because everything in this two-dimensional world in which we currently have our being exists in relationship to its opposite. This is the law of opposites. If you take away its opposite, that which exists does not exist experientially. It only exists conceptually, but not experientially. I'll give you another example. Supposing I have a concept about myself that says I am six feet tall. Fair enough, I'm six feet tall. That's a concept only. The only way it can become an experience is if there is something that is not six feet tall. If there's something that's 5'11", or 4 foot 3, or 2 foot high, or 9 feet high, or 50 feet high, then suddenly 6 feet high, the experience of 6 foot tallness becomes possible. I can actually have the experience of being 6 feet tall only because everything unlike Everything that is the opposite or other than six feet tall exists. If you take that all away, if everything in the whole world was six feet tall, then I could not know what six foot tallness was in my experience. I could only know it conceptually. I could have an idea, but I couldn't have an experience of it. Therefore, now get this, therefore, in order for me to have an experience of six foot tallness, presuming that was an experience that I desired, I would create consciously or unconsciously, everything unlike six foot tallness. I would create things in my experience that were five foot nine, four foot three, or fifty feet high. So that I could then, in the context of all of that, experience the difference, the contrast that I call six foot tallness. Indeed, I would beg the universe to bring me other than six foot tallness so that I could experience six foot tallness. I want to say that again because you really need to hear this. I said, indeed, I would beg the universe to bring me anything, something, anything other than six foot tallness so that I could experience six foot tallness in fullness. And that is exactly what we do when we use the law of attraction. Something that is hardly explained at all in the movie and not very much in most of the literature on this subject. As soon as you invoke the law of attraction, you invoke the law of opposites. The minute you, shall I say, pray for something, or hope for something, or wish for something, or seek to attract something, in that very self-same moment, you will begin to attract that which it is not. Now, if you're not careful... As soon as you begin to attract that which it is not, which you will be doing as a, a tool, a device, to create a context within which you may experience that which you wish to experience, as soon as you begin to attract that which it is not, if you're not careful, you will be discouraged, you will think of that as a sign, sign from God, or a sign from life, or a sign from the universe, that you're not supposed to have, quote unquote, not supposed to have what you were hoping for. And then you will Drop the idea of having it 
in favor of a second thought that's far more powerful that suggests to you that you're not supposed to have it. That is, you will buy into the illusion and you will step into the notness and make it your reality. And you will drop any thought that you could have what you were hoping to experience because its exact opposite has appeared in your daily life. More people than you could possibly imagine have gotten discouraged at this point and have dropped their intention. They've changed their plan. They've erased their goals. They've stepped back from their desires because they've become convinced that they can no longer have that which they were seeking to attract. When in fact the law of opposites and the appearance of that which is other than what we were trying to attract is the first evidence that the law of attraction is working. Wow, do I wish this was explained. should be explained in the first six minutes of that movie. And of course it's not. This is one of the unspoken truths about the law of attraction. I promise you that the moment you declare yourself to be, do, or have anything, everything unlike it will come into the room. The law of opposites requires it to. That's why one of the first principles of most of the world's religions is judge not by appearances. Again, judge not by appearances. In fact, step into the face of appearances, of, of appearances to the contrary and give yourself permission to continue to call forth that which you wish to create. Now, the third of the five great principles of life is the gift of wisdom. And the gift of wisdom is a principle which you utilize when the law of opposites presents its effect in your daily life. The gift of wisdom gives you discernment. It is the gift of wisdom within you. It is the ability of you to know the difference between what the law of opposites has placed before you and the reality that you wish to experience. It's the gift that allows you to continue to remain positive in the face of enormous or what could possibly be enormous negativity, as the opposite of what you chose to call forth appears in your life. You can imagine how negative people can get about this. Imagine imagine calling forth something. Imagine sitting down, listening to uh, um, a recording, or watching the movie of The Secret, or, or reading a book about the subject, and then, and then sitting down and using the law of attraction to create something in your life, like, let's say, more money, or better health or your perfect companion. And here you are working with the law of attraction to create one of those outcomes, or all of them, and suddenly everything unlike it comes into the room. Suddenly you have less money than you ever had before. The bills are piling up like crazy. No one seems to want to companion with you. In fact, your your best friends are move out of town, or suddenly you find yourself all alone. The exact opposite of what you thought was going to happen. You even get the worst cold of your life, or some a worse illness, and suddenly... Good health, a companion, and financial abundance not only is not what you're experiencing, you're experiencing the exact opposite. Imagine how discouraging this could be to somebody. It could be very discouraging to people, and is, of course. Which is when the gift of wisdom must be used. Because the gift of wisdom allows us to know internally the truth, the higher truth. My best outcome is coming to me now. Judge not by appearances. I understand that it doesn't look that way, but my best outcome is coming to me now. And so the gift of wisdom is just an extraordinarily, extraordinarily powerful device. It helps us to move through those moments of great discouragement. The gift of wisdom states that all wisdom lies within you. Do you believe that? You have not been put on the earth by a merciless God who chose not to give you the wisdom to know how to function in this environment. Quite to the contrary, you were put here to use this environment in order to achieve the purpose for which you came, which is the purpose of life itself. And you were given 
the wisdom to understand both the purpose and how to achieve it. Call on this wisdom whenever and wherever you feel the need for its guidance. It will be there. But you must know that it's there. You must be aware that it's there. Oh, I like that little poem. You must be aware that it's there, if you really care. If you aren't aware that you have been given the gift of wisdom, you will start running around to other people. You'll go to classes, workshops, retreats, seminars, read books, get more tapes, more movies, trying to find out what went wrong. Why is the opposite of everything you've chosen showing up in your life? And, and you'll seek the answer elsewhere, and you'll spend more money and more time, as I said, at more retreats and seminars and classes and programs, trying to figure it all out. Because you don't know or don't believe that you have the wisdom within you to explain it all to you and even to show you what is really occurring. Wisdom is a tool given you and all sentient beings. The gift of wisdom gives you discernment. It is what allows you to see that any negative experiences you may be undergoing have been brought to you by you as you build a contextual field within which you may experience what you have chosen to experience of yourself and your world. Often, this creative work is being done by you at a subconscious or superconscious level. Thus, you may not even be consciously aware of it. The gift of wisdom makes it possible for you to be consciously aware, to move with clarity through the contextual field that you have created that is life all around you, and it allows you to invoke the energy of attraction within that contextual field. You see what I'm saying? The gift of wisdom allows you to go back to the law of attraction and to invoke it again inside of the contextual field that was created by the law of opposites. Masters have said to us, as I mentioned a minute ago, judge not by appearances, and this is what they meant. Discernment allows you to see things as they really are and not fall prey to Satan. What is Satan? Satan is just an acronym, S-A-T-A-N, meaning seeing anything as negative. The gift of wisdom allows you to know that as you journey along the path of life, you can expect what some people call failure along the way. But all the great creators, all the exciting people in history, have had something really inspiring to say about failure. Did you, did you know that? Almost every successful person, Barbara Streisand, um, Bill Clinton, politicians, you know, sports stars, anyone who has stood out from the pack and created a, an enormous level of success in their life understands about failure, and that failure isn't really failure at all. They understand that you can expect what some people call failure along the road of life. I like to quote Joseph Sugarman on this topic. He says, and this is a direct quote from Mr. Sugarman, not many people are willing to give failure a second opportunity. They fail once and it's all over. The bitter pill of failure is often more than most people can handle. If you're willing to accept failure and learn from it, if you're willing to consider failure as a blessing in disguise and bounce back, You've got the potential of harnessing one of the most powerful success forces in the universe. Each problem has hidden in it an opportunity so powerful that it literally dwarfs the problem. And the greatest success stories were created by people who recognized a problem and turned it into an opportunity. This is what I call really using the gift of wisdom, opening yourself to discernment and allowing yourself to see the difference between appearances and reality, noticing that what appears to be negative is really positive. It is through wisdom that we understand something quite extraordinary about life in physical form, that all of physicality is an illusion. We are like a magician who has forgotten his own tricks. 
We are living in an Alice in Wonderland world where we swear that what is so is not so and that what is not so is so. Yet in the fact that we are living in an illusion is what makes our lives so exciting and their possibilities so endless for only in a fantasy could we have anything we want and do anything we please and create anything we desire. It is, after all is said and done, as Lewis Carroll wrote. There's no use trying, said Alice. One can't believe impossible things. Why, I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the Queen. I believe six impossible things before breakfast. And I do five of them. So, the law or the gift of wisdom allows you to take what's happening in your life with, into the context of the deep wisdom that resides within you and to understand exactly what's going on. This understanding will stop you from pulling back from your greatest desire because of what appears to be failure. That's why it's so extraordinary. And after using the gift of wisdom to see what is opposing you, which is nothing in truth, and what is inviting you, which is everything in reality, you may then apply the joy of wonder, the fourth of the great principles of life. All things are filled with wonder, for wonder is the nature of God, the essence of divinity, and your natural state of being. Enter into the wonder that you are, and from that place of wonder, imagine your future, your life, and your creative reality in the next grandest version of the greatest vision ever you held about who you are. In this you spread wonder throughout your world and achieve the purpose for which you came to the world. The joy of wonder gives you imagination, allowing you to take all that you have drawn to you through the energy of attraction and the law of opposites, and permitting you to produce your experience of this in all the creative ways that only a rich imagination could conjure. Life becomes an extraordinary adventure when you use the energy of attraction, the law of opposites, the gift of wisdom, and the joy of wonder all at one time to magnetize, contextualize, discern, and select that which you wish to experience right here, right now. But if you don't use all four of those principles, just use simply the law of attraction, I think you'll find that your results will be much harder to achieve. And after invoking the joy of wonder and allowing yourself to express life in a way that you have, you may find it beneficial to observe and honor the presence of cycles, the last of the great principles of life. It's important to know about this. The principle of life states, all of life moves in cycles. There is no straight line in the universe. Ultimately, everything curves in on itself. It's true, the line may be trillions of miles long, but ultimately everything meets itself. The movement of energy and mass around this oval creates the experience of what you would call infinity. This means you have forever to experience that which you wish to experience of who you are. See, everything in life moves in this kind of a swirl. Life itself is a cycle with no, with no start and no finish. Everything exists as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. And the presence of cycles gives you the gift of eternity. Why is that important to know? Because, my lovely, lovely friends, it gives you patience. When you understand that life moves in cycles, you grab for the gift, the insight, the treasure of patience. And patience is one of the most important elements in applying the law of attraction. Now, there's one other thing I want to tell you about this uh, law of attraction, one other unspoken truth uh, that is not talked of very much, and that's the purpose of the law itself. The purpose of the law of attraction, when it's used for its purpose, the law of attraction is very powerful, but the purpose of the law of attraction is often never explained. The purpose of the law of attraction is to allow life to present itself most extraordinarily and most wonderfully for all those whose lives you touch and for you in that order. In that order. 
the intention of creating such a law was to empower us to empower others. And I'll explain why in just a minute. But this is not explained at all in the movie, nor is it discussed in most other books on this subject. In fact, if you watch the movie, it looks as if it's all about me, 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 me. I want a new house, I want a new car, I want a new bicycle, I want a, a, a new uh, necklace to fall on my breast with diamonds and rubies. I, I want, I want, I want. And if you watch the movie very carefully, it, it even pictures those things that I've just described. shows all about how people can have whatever they want, and and you can. But it doesn't talk about the purpose of the law of attraction, nor how the mechanism of manifestation works most effectively, which is to provide for all other people in your life and for all those whose lives you touch, to use the law of attraction to bring through you all those things which you want for yourself in the lives of others. If you weren't careful after watching The Secret, it would seem like very much of a me-first world. And I must say, there are some people who have had some problem with that. And after watching the movie, I felt kind of empty. I felt kind of like, well, yeah, but I understand how this could work for me, but what about the rest of the world? What about the starving children of Africa? What about the, the oppressed in Darfur? What, what, about, what about the people of the world who are suffering, hungry, homeless? Where does that come in? And what I want you to understand is that when everyone whose life you touch comes first, and when what you wish for yourself, you wish for and work for in the lives of others first, then everything you hope to experience in your own life comes crashing in on you without hardly any effort at all. Now, why is this? Is it because serving others first is morally superior? No, 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 no. There's no such thing as morals. Morals are just stories you're making up. Well, then why does it work that way? By the way, I want you to understand that what I'm saying to you right now, this unspoken truth about the law of attraction, watch the movie 50 times, you won't find it in there. This unspoken truth of the law of attraction is contained in some form or another in the teachings of virtually every religion on the face of the earth. The Christian religion, with which I am most familiar, puts it this way. Do unto others as you would have it done unto you. Again, do unto others as you would have it done unto you. You have to listen to that. You have to hear those words. Because that isn't just a great spiritual principle because it pleases God, or it's a nice thing to do for your soul. That is an important spiritual principle because it explains exactly how the mechanism of manifestation works. Now, in these last minutes, I want to explain to you why the mechanism of manifestation works like that. I mean, you need to understand the mechanism itself. The law of attraction states that what you focus on, what you use the energies of life to create, you can create. But if you use the energies of life to create something that you wish to experience in singular form, that is, you want to create it just for yourself, then you are using the energy of attraction at its lowest level. If, on the other hand, you choose to create what you wish to experience in your own life for, shall we say, three or four other people, or five or six other people, or 50 or 100 other people, then you have invoked... Here it comes now. Get ready for this then you have invoked the multiplier effect. Ah, yes. Nothing is mentioned about the multiplier effect when people talk about the law of attraction. The multiplier effect means that if you're trying to use an energy and if you are expanding your use of that energy or focusing it more powerfully by multiplying the number of times you wish the outcome to be produced, then you multiply exponentially the power that you've placed in your own hands to produce it. To put this in simple terms, 
If I'm trying to make myself wealthy, I will achieve one outcome in a certain period of time. If I'm trying to cause 100 people to become wealthy or more abundant, an entirely different level, an exponential increase in the energy of attraction will flow through me. It must, if it's my intention to produce that outcome for 100 people, I have multiplied the energy times 100. It's no secret. In business, people tell you the fastest way to be a success in business is to cause other people to be a success in business. Every business person knows this. Every successful one does. It's true in every other area of your life as well. But even though every successful business person knows that to get rich, make other people rich, most people don't understand why. Why does that work? I'm telling you why right now. It's the mechanism of manifestation. It's the multiplier effect. It's bringing through the energy of creation, the pure, raw energy of the universe, bringing it through you, and then multiplying it and increasing it sevenfold, or seven times seventy, in order to produce a massive outcome. And what flows through you, sticks to you. And suddenly, as you work with all the spiritual power at your command to produce outcomes in the lives of others, the outcomes that you wish to experience in your own life come crashing in on you without any further effort. Almost automatically, almost without being bitten. It just happens that way. For what you give to another, you give to yourself. For a profoundly important reason. There's nobody else in the room. We are all one. And that's why every great religion on the face of the earth has said, Do unto others as you would have it done unto you. Because it is being done unto you. Because there are no others. But when you choose to do unto the other aspects of you that which you wish to experience, you multiply times the number of people you wish to experience it, the power that you've placed in your own hands. This is the multiplier effect. This is the great unspoken truth that no one is talking about, which is why the movie seems like such a me-first kind of experience. And yet, the most successful people of all time are people who have given away that which they wish to receive and caused other people to experience it. And so, Conversations with God tells us in the very early books, be the source of that which you wish to experience in your own life. Be the source of it in the life of another. And that is the most powerful of all of the unspoken truths of the law of attraction. 